internationally celebrated author Paula Hawkins is joining me in Cape Town. Her new thriller, The Girl on the Train, has everyone in the literary world talking. Today we're going to unpack some of the themes and speak about her rapid success. Hello. Hi. Thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you very much for having me. Now I want to speak about The Girl on the Train. People are calling this the thriller of the year. Did you expect this? this um mania really around the book no i certainly didn't um it's 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 quite overwhelming um i had my my publishers were very enthusiastic about it and we were optimistic but i didn't expect it to become such a big deal so and how did you feel when when you started to see the ball rolling and this roller coaster of success coming your way well i mean it's, it's, it's obviously wonderful it's what we we all dream about but it's also quite quite daunting and mm -hmm. makes you feel a bit vulnerable when you realize that there's so many people in the world who have the book and have opinions about it and that kind of thing so it's quite it's quite frightening is it weird to think that so many people are reading your book yeah. and oh, yeah. seeing a side of you that maybe you didn't know that so many people <laughs> would see yeah, no, absolutely. As I said, it, it makes you feel a bit vulnerable and a bit sort of exposed. So, yeah, um, I don't read, uh, you know, you, you kind of stop, stop reading your, you know, reviews on Goodreads or Amazon and that kind of thing and just kind of shrink away from it a bit. But it's also wonderful. I mean, it's great that so many people have responded to the book so well. Now, the book was inspired by your experiences on the train. I'm sure your experiences weren't as dramatic oh, as, no, they were. as the ones in the book. But tell us about what inspired the story, where well, it came from. The, the, sort of the idea was inspired by my, in, my early commutes in London. Just um, that, that thing you do where you sit on the train and you're going really close to, to people's houses and you can, you can see inside and you might catch a glimpse of them every now and again and you start to wonder what they're up to or what their lives might be like. And, and I started thinking, oh, what, you know, what would you do if you saw something that's shocking or, you know, an act of violence or something? And, and so from then it kind of built and built. But yeah, I didn't, I never saw anything terrible. I never saw anything even remotely interesting. So <laughs> this is all imagination. Well, you made it very interesting for us. Now, your main character, Rachel Watson, she's, it's been widely reported that she's unreliable and, and a little bit unlikable. When did she first come to you? When did you know she was going to be the star of the story? Well, Rachel, Rachel's character was somebody I'd been thinking about in, in actually in the context of another story for a while. I wanted to write about a woman who had an addiction problem and who, who, was, who was unreliable and had memory loss issues as a result of this. And I, so I'd been thinking about her for a while and I do find her, her particular sorts of problems lend themselves to this kind of story because, you know, she, she's so unreliable, she can't trust herself, she can't trust her judgments, so the reader certainly can't trust her. But that kind of draws you more into the story because you've got to figure out, you know, what, what, what's really going on here? What is Rachel not telling us? What can't Rachel tell us? Was it difficult to develop a character like this? And what difficulties did you have, if any? Well, yeah, I suppose so, because as you say, she's, she's an uncomfortable, per it's uncomfortable to live in her skin. She hates herself. She feels terrible about herself and she does stupid things. And she's so, yeah, I mean, it was it was quite uncomfortable being with her, but I, I found her compelling. So I, I still wanted to stick with her and I wanted her to get better. And she does to some degree. She's she's fighting back a little bit. Well, I know you've said before that you definitely do have a dark side. Tell us about tapping into that dark side to sit down and pen this book. Well, yeah, I think I'm just, I'm just one of those people who's quite interested in the darker side of psychology and in the, the horrible things that people do to each other where, when relationships go wrong or that, you know, you read stories in the newspaper and you just think, how did these people get to this point that they're doing these things to each other? And so I find that fascinating, which is obviously not very nice, but that's just what I'm like. I think a lot of people find that fascinating. They just don't admit it. <laughs> well, I have now. <laughs> now you went from journalist to fiction writer. How did you go from being a financial journalist to, to doing this kind of writing? I imagine it's quite um, difficult to make that transition. Well, I, d I sort of, my, my route to it was quite, quite peculiar because, um, I was actually I was commissioned to write a series of, of novels, um, a series of women fiction novels. So the the first book wasn't even my idea; it was somebody else gave me the idea. So in a in a sense, it was almost like a, a journalistic commission. Yeah. I was given a deadline and I was given a subject and I wrote it. So it was actually quite a a, a nice way to ease into it. Um, but and then from then on, I I started developing my own kind of storylines and characters and whatnot. 
Now, you actually sent the novel to publishers before it was finished. That's right. Um, well, before all of the like really juicy stuff came out. <laughs> I heard. Well, I had I'd planned it all out so I could give them you know a full synopsis, mm -hmm. but I'd only written half of the book, and as um, I've talked about this before, I was kind of in a little bit of trouble financially. I needed I needed to get a book deal, so I didn't. I just said to my agent, "Can you just go to the publishers with this and let's see how it goes?" And I had a really great response straight away, so phew, that was a, that was a big relief. What was their initial reaction? The publishers? Yeah. Well, I, I got offers from a number of different publishers and they were, it was, it was fantastic, it was really gratifying because suddenly I found, you know, people are, are pitching to me saying, oh, you must come to us, you know, so that was a, they, they, they loved the character of Rachel. I know she's problematic, but I think they found, you know, there was so much to be interested in in her. And, um, and the, and the, that, that pitch, um, which is the, the idea of seeing something from your commuting train, of glimpsing something yeah. in other people's lives, I think that's, that also, you know, they, they thought, oh yeah, people will like that, lots of people do that kind of thing, you know. Now, is Rachel still with you? I know authors often carry characters for quite a long time. Um, no, I think she's gone for now. Um, <laughs> she might come back, okay. but <laughs> she's gone for now. Well, that leads me into my next question. I felt the book had somewhat of an open ending. Will we hear from Rachel again, or is her, s her um, story? I don't uh, know. I don't. I don't. Not anytime soon. But I, I sometimes do like wonder what would happen if her and and Anna's paths crossed down the line somewhere. So you never know. I might. I might bring her back. Now I have a question from a fan who's read the book. Oh. Uh, the question is, the book speaks to us about treading carefully with information because what we think we see could be misinterpreted in today's society. We see a lot of this happening, especially on social media. Is your book somewhat of a cautionary tale in this respect? I think it is. Yeah, I think that's true because I think we are all tempted to make judgments about the people we see every day and to read things into their lives. And we may not think that we're doing it in a malicious way, but we are still making assumptions and half the time we don't know the full story. So yeah, and I think that the point about social media is a very good one, that it's very quick to react to things that people say and take them the wrong way. Um, and perhaps we should all sit back and think a bit more carefully. All right, well, are you currently working on anything else we can look forward to? I'm working at the moment. Uh, well, I will be when I'm back in England. <laughs> and. Um, uh, yeah, I'm writing. It's a, it's a story about sisters. It's also a thriller. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping to finish it sort of in the next few months and hopefully it'll be out next year. We, we can't, can't wait. wait. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to ask you before I let you go, what, what's your um, opinion and thoughts on the comparisons that have made between your book and Gone Girl? Um, it's, it's extremely flattering, I think, because I, I love Gone Girl um, and I love that character of Amy Dunn, who I think is wonderful. Um, and I, I can see why there are some com comparisons that really flawed um, female protagonist who isn't what you think she is at first. Um, but other than that, they're actually very different books yeah. about very different things. So, but it, you know, it's it, as I say, it's flattering, very flattering. Will you ever be on board with making the book into a movie? Uh, I won't. Well, it is being made into a movie. Is, is it? Yeah, uh, well, yes. DreamWorks have bought it, um, but I'm not actually going to be involved in the process of. Oh, adapting it. They're, I've given it over to them. They are doing their thing. Does that scare you as an author? Uh, well, not really. Um, I'm, I've never written for film. I don't really know about making films. So I think it's probably, it's probably a wise thing to give it over to the professionals. I think it's probably a very difficult thing to adapt your own work, particularly if you're new to it. So I'm letting them get on with it. Paula, thank you so much for joining me. I can't thank wait you. until your next book comes out. Thank you.